And actually, my manager has known uh, Christine for, I don't know, over a decade, and he read the very first draft of the script back in the late 90s. So he's actually known the project forever, but um, he introduced me to Christine and we had a meeting, but then I came into audition and I thought that was great because she didn't know me, she didn't know my work, and, and as, as much as it would be nice to just have someone offer you a role, and I've had that happen and it is a gift from the gods, but still, I was happy to know that I was cast because I was right, not just because I was a friend of a friend of a friend. The way I feel, and this is a very blanket statement, but I feel like comedic actors are often able to do drama, no problem. Dramatic actors not always able to do comedy, right? Totally agree. Yeah. I think comedic acting requires a whole, uh, a, a different, a differently tuned set of skills, um, but I don't find it more, more difficult. I find it I might find it a little more fun, um, only because I love making people laugh. That, that's, yeah. It's a simple thing. My experience with, with relatively new filmmakers has been really positive. Um, I guess I've been lucky to work with people who have a very clear and clean vision of what they want. And I always felt that from Christine. And whether, whether that's because she'd lived with the material for so long and because it was hers, I don't know. But um, she always, always came across to me and always was amazingly in production, so calm. And I know there were times of torrent and drama, and but that never registered in a professional way. And um, post-production now, with enough hindsight, I can look back and just be stunned by that. Because I think that was that's a true sign of a lasting professional's ability to be that cool. She was so cool. And I always felt like I had creative freedom, and that I was supported in that, but the direction she gave was clear and made sense to me and wasn't ego-driven. Like, she saw in her actors what their strengths were, that's why she cast them, and then she just kind of went like this. And uh, for an actor, oh, that's heaven. And I was lucky, too, that I was at the point in my career where I felt confident enough to play within a role and not maybe not be given tons of direction, but a good director knows when to step back. And I, I felt like she was like that. I think... Um, She's so intelligent, and as a woman, and as an Asian American woman too, I think it's exponentially hard. Um, because I think within some Asian American communities, it's very difficult for the women in those communities to have uh, status. Just culturally, it's hard. And so she's, you know, she's really strengthened herself against all these different forces that would very easily be like, no, you can't do blank or whatever. But, it, but uh, in spite of that, she didn't develop any dragon lady tendencies, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she didn't overcompensate. She never, I didn't ever get the sense that she was letting anyone define her. She is who she is. She wanted to do this project. She had a ton of unlimited passion for it. So she did it. End of story. I'm really excited about, and actually is moving forward, is a, an animated series that I'm a part of on oh. Fox. And um, Jonah Hill is writing, producing it, and uh, along with um, Andy and uh, these, these two other guys that are producers on it. And um, it is hilarious. It's called Alan Gregory. And I'm voicing uh, his sister, Jonah Hill's sister. He's playing the title character, Alan Gregory, and I'm playing his sister, Julie, who is adopted from Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. It's really fun. So we've shot, uh, we've um, recorded seven episodes, and they'll start in the fall. project that I actually just returned from Korea to do was a writer-director friend of mine has a, has a beautiful script about an adoptee who goes back to Korea, and we just went over to Korea to shoot footage for a trailer. For it because he's in the process of getting funding and gathering a team and all that sort of thing. So myself, another actor, and him went over and did it. Total gorilla. Sorry, sorry Korea. And um, came away with what I what I think and hope will be some really lovely footage. But the the story is is beautiful and um, I'm really proud to be associated with it. And I, I the content is great and and as you are interested, I'm I'm really fascinated with getting it more mainstream. I just want the idea of adoption, particularly international, just to be not such a mystery to people anymore. It is, it's still such a mystery, and, and it seems so natural to me, but um, it's a fascinating topic. So the fact that it's a feature film, I'm excited about it. But uh, the other actor, Lanny Kim, 
um, thank the gods, he's fluent, and so he was able to help because because the writer director is also an adoptee. So it's oh. two ad adoptees and a Korean Amer another Korean American um, who who has a much better sense of language. I'm trying slowly but surely to learn, but you know, it's it, like unless you. It's really hard if you don't do it when you're young too. Oh yes, I'm struggling. My adult brain is struggling with it, but. Um, being in there just for the week, I could see, you know, to go and live for at least a year, you could really start to absorb some of it. But yeah, gosh, I think I think I just came home and, and I've been struggling with jet lag, so I've been trying to acclimate very quickly back to Los Angeles. But it's called First Under Heaven, and it's, it's just lovely, and I, I hope it moved forward in some way.